Thank that you. was very beautiful. Thank you, Lisa. Good morning, Park Church. If Isn't it a great day? It is so beautiful. And, you know, I've been thinking about it a lot lately. And even though we've got all this crazy stuff happening around us, I can find thankfulness and peace in Jesus Christ. And that just brings me joy. Every time I hear the negative stuff in the news, I just think, Jesus, salvation. It can't get better than that. Um, as you all know, I'm Judy Lane. I'm here to actually help run the service today because Pastor Mike and Pastor Noel are still at home recovering from COVID. So everybody give a shout out to them. Hello, we love you. We miss you. And I know they will be listening online for both services. So really good that you're healing and on your way to recovery and we're glad they're taking the time they need to heal their bodies completely. We just hope that those who are suffering from COVID out there um, know that we, they have the church behind us. And for all of you with us online today, I want to say thank you for dialing in and being with us this morning. So I'm going to start out with um, uh, talking about our new series. We're starting a brand new worship series today called The Way Forward. And the good news is you don't have to listen to me preach this morning, <laughs> okay? Pastor Mike was well enough to be able to do a video for us. So later on in the service, we're going to have this wonderful message from Pastor Mike as we start our new um, series called The Way Forward. And isn't that what we all need is a better way forward? So we'll be exploring that together. As for some a few announcements, we have some incredible stuff coming up, all right? First of all, the church picnic, which originally we are going to try to have in September, is going to be now in October. And it's basically the third weekend in October. I'm going to get my dates wrong, but around October 15th, 16th, that time frame, we are actually going to have a park church camp out here in the parking lot of the church. So if you like to camp, you, I'm going to get a sign-up sheet out there, and you can bring your trailer, and you won't have electric. We're going to be doing what they call boondocking in the RV world, all right? So come boondock with us with your trailers and RVs, and if you're a tent camper, then you are perfectly set up because we have this gorgeous green space out to the side of the church that we can put tents up and things along those lines. And if you are not a camper, Good news, we will probably have campfires on Friday night and Saturday night, so you can come join us and around the campfire, and we'll sing some songs and just have fellowship and enjoy the great outdoors together as one family of God. Um, then on Sunday after church, we're going to have our church picnic. By then, Noel and Mike will be back, and they should be nice and healthy, and so we'll get you more information on how you can sign up for what we're going to bring for the church picnic and what we're going to be doing on that. So that's a couple of things we have to look forward to. Lastly, I want to bring up a great opportunity for you. As you know, behind the park church, we're a missional church. That means our purpose here at the park is really to serve others. And the opportunity that we have for you to serve others is called Wiz Kids. Joshua's Place will be um, working with Wiz Kids for the Little Miami program. And basically, it gives you a chance on Thursdays to go ahead and um, provide some different help for the kids, um, some tutoring, um, some fellowship time with them, maybe some Bible stories. Uh, what else am I forgetting on that, Kevin? Snacks as well. My favorite part, the snacks. I, I know that used to be Jen's great area was popcorn, right? Yes. So uh, we will be having sign-up sheets out in the lobby for that. It'll happen on Thursdays, and we would love for you to get involved with Wiz Kids and help Joshua's Place reach out to the, our children in our community through the school. All right. So that's pretty much what I have for announcements. What prayer requests do we have today? Anybody? Yes, Steve. Okay. 
Okay, so John Davis has had his surgery and is having some difficulties post-surgery. Is he still in the hospital? All right, so we need to keep John Davis and Deanna and the entire family in our prayers as he recovers from this very big surgery that he had. So, so keep him in your prayers. Anybody else? Yes, Carol. A praise. I love praises. Okay. Outstanding. 61 years of marriage for Lynn and Carol. And Lynn, Lynn still, I don't know, he just reached for his heart there for a minute. Um, <laughs> well, God bless you. And here's to wonderfully long marriages. All right. You did well, Lynn. You gave her a good anniversary. It was better than the 60th when you were in the hospital, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Praise God. And thank you for all you guys have given to the church over the years. Um, I don't know about the rest of you, but I look to Lynn and Carol as you know, foundations of this church, and I, um, you inspire me each and every day, so God bless you on your anniversary, and continued, may we all get to celebrate 75 with you down the road, wouldn't that be great, that'd be pretty cool, so, um, other prayers and praises that we have, I'm ready, okay, I've got a couple I need to share, keep Elizabeth in your prayers, you know, her family's been going through a lot with her aunts, and now um, her son is ill, so that's why she is not with us today. So please keep Elizabeth Smith and her family in your prayers as and healing for her son. Um, additionally, we have other church members, Jay and Karen. Keep them in your prayers. Jay is still in the hospital, but we're hoping he'll be able to come home this week. And um, obviously, Noel and the pastor. And there's probably too many people to remember that are all out there. So just any of the unlifted prayers, um, just say a prayer for everybody. This COVID coming back again has been a little rough on this community lately. So hopefully we can all just keep going in Christ and find strength in his loving word. So let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you. We just praise your name and are just so inspired by, by what you give us every each and every day from the beauty of the sunset going through the night to the sunrise and the incredible plan that you have set out for us. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us of all of our inequities. Lord, we are sinners by nature, but we know that you are our way forward. We ask you to come in and help direct us in that path that you are calling us to follow. Let us serve our community fully. Let us follow the ways that you lay before us. And Lord, we pray for those who are out ill, who have lost loved ones, for those who wish they could be with us here but are still recovering. We ask you, Lord, just to send them your healing presence and help them to recover and make it through so that they can stand and walk and rejoice in you. Lord, we ask that your word come into this place today. Fill us with your presence so that we may go out this week and fill the world with you. In your son's name we pray, amen. All right, let us stand and praise the Lord. Open my eyes that I may see this is a truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful key that shall old clouds beset me free. Silently now I wait for thee. Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes. Truth 
sent his clear and while the wave notes fall on my ear everything falls will disappear silently now i wait for thee ready my god thy will to see open my ears children thus to share. Silently now I wait for thee, ready my God thy will to see. Open my heart, illumine me, Spirit divine. Amen and amen. profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker, maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and he sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. So at this time, we are going to take up our offering, and Todd's going to help me with that. Um, I'd like to start out, though, by praying over the uh, offering. Oh, Lynn, are you going to do it? Okay, great. <laughs> he, he's taking the opportunity to sit. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, this time of the service I find to be very special to me. God has given us so much in our lives, and it's not very often that we can give back. He gave us the ultimate gift of his son. And so whether you give financially or give from your heart, I'd like you to take this time in prayer to say, Lord, I give it all to you. Let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you for the blessings that you've poured out upon our lives. We ask that you accept this offering. May it be used to reach out to those who are in need, to support those that are in pain, to give blessings to those that have needs. And Lord, may it help us to reach out and spread the good news of your son to the fellow community around us, to the nation that surrounds that, and to the entire world. In your son's name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Lisa. Um, for all of you who do not know Lisa, she is a wonderful member of our praise band from the 1030 service, and she just stepped in this morning to pinch hit. Didn't she do a beautifully job? We applaud you, and thank you for your gifts and talents. Um, you are a special lady. All right, so now we are going to go to hear a wonderful message from Pastor Mike as we move to the way forward. Good morning, uh, Park Church, and those of you who are joining us online this morning. It's uh, good to be with you, even if it's by video this morning. Uh, welcome into our home. Uh, me and Noel are feeling much better now. And uh, we uh, the recovery is taking us a little bit longer than we thought it would. Um, but we look forward to being back with you um, just as soon as possible. And I, I just want to thank everyone for your prayers and your support. And uh, those of you, uh, Cindy Ware and Kevin Cooper and Judy Lane, and I know there's many others who have um, really stepped up uh, these past couple Sundays. And I just really thank you for that. And as well as we know that there are others um, who are um, having health issues right now in our church, in our community. So um, we are certainly praying for you and, and thinking of you as well. Uh, this morning, I just wanted to kind of kick us off as we go into a new series, and um, I look forward, like I mentioned, to be back soon, and um, I got a few notes here, and I want to um, do my best to uh, get us set up here this morning, um, but I look forward to coming and um, sharing and going a little bit deeper with you as well. So this morning, I'm just going to kind of keep this short and simple, and and um, just give us a little bit of direction as we move forward here, and that is the name of our new series. Um, the way forward, 
And I would like to share a passage with you this morning that God's put in my heart these past couple of weeks. Um, it's Matthew 6.33. I believe we have it on screen or um, if you're following along in your Bibles. And this is what it says. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Now, when we read this passage on the surface, I mean, I think all of us can say, well, of course, Jesus is number one in my life. Of course, Jesus comes before everything else. But if we're really honest with ourselves, um, we get up in the morning and uh, before you know it, half, we've went through half the day or maybe the whole day. And uh, we find that maybe we put Jesus at third or fourth in our life, right? And it could be because maybe we're dealing with temptation. It could be because of our own selfish desires. Um, it because maybe we have our own agenda. And what this passage reminds us is when we put Jesus first in our families, um, in our work, in our workplaces, in our communities, um, in our careers, um, God will bless us um, as we go to him first in prayer, as we go to him uh, to his word first as we go to uh, pray with other believers and to connect with other believers when we when we put Jesus first in everything that we do God will bless us and as he blesses us then we will become a light to those around us because they will see that God comes first in our life and um, we will then be able to, to share the gospel with those around us much more effectively and we're going to be talking about that some here this morning as well, about um, sharing the gospel with others and, um, and, and being effective at doing that. So we're going to begin um, with uh, Luke chapter 5 in this series, um, verse 36 and 38, uh, 36 through 38. And also there is a, we're going to be talking about wineskins, and there's a really good book that's probably upside down. I'm not sure how that works, but um, it's called the wine, it's called wineskins. It's uh, written by Howard Snyder, and um, it's called The Problem of Wineskins, by the way. This is a really good book if you want to go a little bit deeper, and you can order that online somewhere. And um, uh, But a really good book, a really good read about wineskins. So um, let's read this passage here. I'm going to um, read again from Luke chapter 5, verses 36 through 38. And it says this, Then he spoke a parable to them. No one puts a piece from a new garment on an old one. Otherwise, a new makes a tear, and also the piece that was taken out of the new does not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, or else the new wine will burst, and the wineskins um, will be spilled, and the wineskins will be ruined. But new wine must be put into new wineskins, and both are preserved. So uh, other versions say um, fresh wineskins. And we're going to be talking a little bit about that here um, in, in just a few moments, about how God always is doing something fresh, and God is always doing something new. You know, I know it's been a difficult time for um, churches and businesses and families in this past year and a half or so, but I truly believe that God wants to do something new, that God wants to do something fresh, that God's going to bring us out of all of this, and he's going to do things that we never could have ever imagined. Um, if we put Jesus first, and if we are willing to change, if we are willing to allow God to renew us, if we're willing to allow God to move us into new directions, even if it seems a little bit uncomfortable, even if it seems risky, um, that we would do new and exciting things through the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and that's what Jesus was trying to get across in this parable um, that I just read here to us. Now, I just want to give us a little bit of context to this parable. Um, we're going to go a few verses back um, to Luke chapter uh, 5, verse 33. And what we're going to read here in a moment is that the Pharisees, or the experts of the law at that time, um, they were asking Jesus why his disciples were eating and drinking with sinners and that they were, they were failing or they weren't praying or fasting um, like they were doing or like the uh, disciples of John the Baptist. And, and this is what the, the verse tells us. Um, again, Luke chapter 5, verse 33. It says, They said to him, John's disciples often fast and pray, and so did the disciples of the Pharisees. But yours go on eating and drinking. 
Now, again, for some context here, at this time, the, the Pharisees had a, have, have adopted this kind of legalistic practice of fasting twice a week. And they were only, according to the Mosaic law at that time, they were only stipulated to abstain from food and to fast only one day a year, which was on, on the Day of Atonement, the, 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 the holiest day in, in the, the religion of Judaism at that time. So how Jesus responded to the um, uh, Pharisees uh, was through a parable. And we talked about parables um, in our last series. So we're going to start this series with a parable, the wineskins that we just read. And uh, Jesus uh, uses these stories to illustrate to them that um, that uh, the, the, the Christian faith isn't all about rules and it's not all about legalistic and uh, traditions, that, that we are to be focused on Jesus first and that we are called to minister to those around us and to love God with all our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our mind. Now, I want to be clear here. Jesus wasn't suggesting that fasting isn't important. He's not suggesting that fasting isn't significant. If Jesus is calling you to fast, by all means, if he's calling you to to, uh, to not fill yourselves with food or, you know, some people fast different things so that he can fill you and you can get clarity in certain things in your life, by all means, we should uh, be fasting. But what Jesus was um, pointing out here is that the Pharisees had turned fasting into something that it wasn't supposed to be. They was turning it into a, a legalistic tradition um, rather than about a sincerely seeking God's face and seeking God's heart and, and ministering to those around them. So Jesus uses the illustration of wineskins. So it's important that we understand this for some context. Um, at this time, wineskins were typically goat skin or that they would use um, to, to hold fermented uh, liquid, which, you know, wine was a uh, fermented liquid that expands. So if you put a uh, wine into old wineskins that had already been stretched to the limit, uh, then it would burst at the seams and, and the wineskins would break. Um, that's why when you put at that time, you would put new wine into new wine skins so that the, the, the um, wine skin would then expand with the wine and it would adapt. And that's a really imp important word as we go forward in this series that we find ways to adapt um, to, uh, to different ways of sharing the gospel. Um, and we're going to talk more about that here in just a few moments. Um, so spiritually here, uh, Jesus, what Jesus was talking about spiritually is he, he was showing the disciples a, a different way of living out their faith. Um, because Jesus' disciples, they were doing completely the opposite of the Pharisees. I mean, they were sitting with the sinners. They were healing the sick. Uh, they were touching the untouchable. Uh, they were loving other people unconditionally. And they weren't so much concerned about living according to burdensome rules and regulations that would just hinder them from living out the two greatest commandments. And I mentioned those earlier, to, to love God with all of your heart, soul, and mind, and to uh, love others as yourself. So, so this new way of living out their faith, this new teaching, it, it was beginning to grow and it was bursting the old wineskins of Judaism. So that's a little bit of history, a little bit of context to the passage. And that's important to understand as we move throughout this series. So I would encourage you to read this passage yourself. Um, go look at some commentary, learn more, um, send me some emails if you have any questions. And, and again, I'll be expanding more on this when um, uh, throughout the next couple of weeks. Now, just uh, to clarify a few things, uh, the wine in this story, I believe we have this up on the screen this morning, the wine equals the gospel message. So the, the gospel message, it never changes. Uh, Jesus made a way for all of us to be forgiven, uh, to be transformed into a new creation, uh, to be set free from sin and bondage, and has given us eternal hope and eternal life with him. And this is a, a timeless truth uh, that will never change. The only way of, of salvation comes through Jesus Christ. However, the wineskins... That's how we transmit the gospel. That's what Jesus was referring to here in the parable. And if you recall in our discipleship series about a month or two ago, we talked a little bit about this. We talked about the Great Commission 
and that our responsibility as Christians is to share Jesus with others, right? To, to communicate to others, to transmit the gospel uh, through our words and through our deeds and through our actions. And we're all built differently, spiritually and, and, and how we connect with people. And we all share our faith in different ways. Some of us build our, uh, share our faith through maybe building relationships with others, and it takes time. Others may be like the Apostle Paul. We just go out, we give them the truth. We, 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 we share the gospel with them. And, and others, maybe we pray for other people. Um, we share our faith through our spiritual disciplines, through our, our ministry structures and how we do church. And, and that's what Jesus was trying to get across here. Jesus was trying to get across, and, and this is important for us to understand, is that even though the wine or the gospel message never changes, God never changes, However, how we transmit the gospel uh, from one culture to another or from one generation to another generation will change because people, they react differently to the gospel in, in different uh, cultures and in different generations. In, in other words, what we did five or 10 or, or 20 years ago in sharing the gospel, that may have been effective then, um, but it's not as effective today. Uh, because why? Well, culture changes, people change, um, how people connect the church and view church and, and God and all of that changes. So we have to find different ways um, to share the gospel with other people. I, I gave a couple of examples here. I, I wrote down a couple of examples. Um, for one example is, you know, how we share our faith with people in a different country. You missionaries out there are those people who maybe have went on mission trips have recognized that um, how you share your faith with people in a different country is going to be different than how we share our faith here in the United States. The same is true with how we share our faith with the younger generation is probably going to be different than how we share our faith with the older generation. A another example is in the 70s and 80s. If you recall Campus Crusade and the Billy Graham Crusades and other TV evangelists, I know at least a dozen people that accepted Christ by watching a Billy Graham crusade. And that was a very effective way in the 70s and 80s um, to share the gospel with others. Another uh, wineskin would be the personal evangelism movement. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the personal evangelism movement. Uh, four spiritual laws and the road to Romans, right? We passed out tracts and we would walk people through the plan of salvation and um, at rock concerts or you know, different events and things like that. Um, that was another example of a wineskin. We see the megachurch model in the late 1990s and, and moving forward, you know, kind of we build it, we put on a big show and uh, people will show up, they'll hear the gospel, they'll get connected with the church, uh, another effective way. And today, and I've talked a little bit about this, we're seeing more of the missional model um, where the church exists um, to go out to the people, not so much just to bring them in and connect with them in their culture and um, rather than just expecting them to show up to our church and to conform to the ways that we do church. So there are different, another example actually is, especially during COVID-19, has been social media and online church. Another wineskin, another way of reaching others with the gospel. Uh, so we see um, throughout history we see different wineskins being used at different times for different situations and different cultures and different people. And because people change as time change and Jesus calls us uh, to change as well and to find new and creative ways uh, to transmit the gospel. Um, so those are some things to think about um, as, we, as we go through this together. I'm gonna challenge you here in just a few moments um, of some uh, ways that we can um, start to think differently about how we uh, share our faith individually as well as how we share our faith corporately as a church. Um, just, uh, I, I wanna touch on this a little bit here as I, as I prepare to close in a, in a few more passages. And again, God is always doing something new. That is so important for us to realize and recognize because it's so easy for us just to find our faith to grow stagnant, right? Uh, we just get kind of caught up in um, just the spiritual, checking off the spiritual list of, uh, you know, uh, practices. And, and we, we, we find ourselves just going through the motions in our faith 
and we find our faith to become dull and then we find it difficult to share our faith because we're not really too excited about our faith. So God always is doing something new um, and exciting so that we can um, um, uh, be renewed and, and find new ways to share the gospel. I want to share just a, a few passages here. Um, Isaiah 42, 9 tells us this, Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. In Isaiah 43, 19, it tells us, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Do you not see it? Ezekiel eleven nineteen tells us, And I will give them a new heart, and I will put a new spirit within them. So again, God is a God of new things. So on one hand, again, like I've mentioned, uh, God never changes. The gospel message never changes. But that doesn't mean that God is static, or that doesn't mean that God is stationary, and that he isn't moving us in new and different directions. And, and we see this throughout history. Um, we see God doing new and exciting things throughout the passages and throughout Scripture and throughout the history of the church. For example, when, when God spoke to Abraham and, and told him that he was going to make him the father of all nations and that he was going to protect his people and give them a new home. And we also see when Moses parted the water, parted the Red Sea, and he, he led the Israelites out of bondage and, and God revealed his faithfulness to his people. Could you imagine how excited Moses was when the Red Sea parted in front of him? Um, we also see when David, uh, King David, who was a no-name runt in a, in, a, in, a, in a shepherd in a field, and, and, and he defeated Goliath with, a, with just a stone, and he was anointed and became a, a great leader over the kingdom of Israel and the lineage of, of Jesus himself. And imagine a Mary, um, when she found out that she had been, uh, the Holy Spirit came upon her and she was uh, uh, conceived to give birth to Jesus in the incarnation and she was going to give birth to the Savior of the world and save us from our sin. And, and, and finally, uh, the Pentecost, uh, when, when the Holy Spirit came and fell upon God's people and empowered them to do incredible things. I mean, the list could go on. I mean, God is always doing something new and always doing something exciting to reach uh, those around him with his love and with his, with his grace and with his power. And I think a second thing that we can learn from this um, parable is uh, obviously that we must be willing to change. We must be willing to allow God to renew us and to be open, to, to open our spiritual eyes to perceive the new things that God is doing and, and to put on new wineskins. Because again, it's so easy just to find ourselves just going through the motions and just kind of walking through things. So I'd like for us here um, just to look at uh, the, um, one, one more passage where we've already looked at this passage, but I want us to look at this passage one more time. And it's Luke chapter five, verses 37 through 38. And, and this is what it says. And no one pours new wine into old wineskin. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins. The wine will run out and the wineskins will be ruined. No new, wine must be, no new wine must be poured out into new wine skins. So I just wanted to, to, to read this one more time just to remind us that Jesus is being very clear that we must learn to adapt to our culture and adapt to the times that we live in and find new ways, new wineskins to reach those for the gospel. So I'm going to close with this. And just something that I think we have uh, this on the screen as well. And I, I just want to give you a couple of things to think about as we go through this, the rest of this series together. And, um, and I look forward to doing that. Uh, Cindy Ware is going to be helping us out as well. And I want you to consider uh, these, these three questions, both individually and as a church. Um, as we go through the series together. The first question is this, what does it look like to share Jesus in my culture and in my community? And is it working? And if it's not working, the second question is, do I need to change how I share the gospel with others? Do we have to find new and creative ways to transmit, uh, to have that wine skin, which is, the, is, is what is the contact between the wine and the world, to transmit the gospel message to others? What do we need to change in our lives or in the life of our church? Which is a third question 
on what does our church need to change to share Jesus more effectively uh, with those in our community. So um, how can we make these changes? So we're going to be looking at these, uh, these three questions. And we're also going to be looking at three principles that can help us to develop new wineskins. And I'm going to call it Sam. I didn't name it after anybody specifically. It just, that's the order in which God gave it to me. And I shared this with our worship team here um, some time back. And they even said, we need to, you know, include this into a series. So we're going to be looking at ways to develop um, new wineskins in our life. So um, we're going to call it Sam. And the first thing that we're going to learn, and, and um, uh, Cindy's going to be talking about, well, actually, I'm going to be talking about simple. So S stands for simple, which means this new wineskins that we need to keep it simple and realistic. Is this something that we can achieve? Is it simple? Is it something that will come across to people in a way that they can understand it? So simple. The second one is authentic. And that is basically to keep it real, to be whoever it is that God calls us to be. We don't have to be like somebody else. We don't have to be like the church down the road, but that we are authentic in our faith. And lastly is meaningful. So is it, are we sharing the gospel in a way that is meaningful to others, in ways that it impacts their lives, in ways that it, it helps connect them to the gospel in a meaningful way? So I'm going to pray for us here in just a moment. But I'd like for you to consider these questions and be in prayer as we move forward. As God shows us the way forward, as we go into a new season, new things, and, and we just allow God to, to move in us and to work in us and to give us creative ways to share the gospel with others. And that's just to learn more about these wineskins and the changes that we need to make. Because um, God wants to do a new thing. God wants to do a new thing in you. He wants to do a new thing in me. And it begins by allowing God to, to, to um, shape our hearts and to move our lives and to, and, and to, to just perceive um, what the Holy Spirit is showing us. So that is my prayer for us um, and uh, going forward. And again, uh, we look forward to being back with you soon and uh, learning and growing together. And uh, we're going to continue to pray for those of you who aren't feeling well at this time and and uh, for what God has for us all in the future. So let me pray for us uh, this morning. Father, we just thank you for being present. Uh, we just pray uh, for those now that aren't feeling well, those who have family members who aren't feeling well. A uh, number of people come to my mind. We pray for Jay and for Karen. We pray for Elizabeth's son, um, Susan and Frank. And uh, we pray for uh, just family members. We pray for uh, uh, Joe Dooley and all that he's been through here recently and Amber and their family and uh, Father, there's just so many needs out there before us and we just give those all to you and Father, we just ask that you would show us um, the way that you would call us to live, that we would live as kingdom people, that you would uh, restore us, that you would redeem us, um, that you would renew us in such ways that would uh, draw other people to you and help us to be uh, people willing to change. Uh, people willing to follow you wherever you may lead. And we just thank you that you give us the Holy Spirit, that you enable, to, enable us and empower us to do things beyond what we could ever imagine. So Father, we just give this day to you, and we put you first in our lives. And we pray all this in your name. Amen. Amen. So again, it's good to be with you, and uh, we look forward to being with you personally. And um, God bless you, and may God bless you the rest of this day. We'll see you later. All right. God bless you, Mike. We really appreciate you bringing us such a powerful message today. So keeping it simple, authentic, and mindful. That's our, where we're headed with this new service. So as we close, let us say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now go in Christ. Have a wonderful week.
and uh, see what you can do to make a difference on this world. Amen.